Today is uh, day three of IMTS, and I finally managed to get into the uh, the main hall, and it's uh, <laughs> it's massive as always. So there we go. Mm -hmm. There's always the uh, traditional IMTS ballet of robots, which Anuk is <laughs> always infamous for putting on. Part of what's happening is uh, still that hybrid approach, like I talked about yesterday. I mean, there's a lot of that going on, and um, what's really cool is like the the 3D hybrid stuff. I mean, they're straight on like metal welding and then finishing, and they're making real parts, which is uh, pretty cool. And the fact that that thing is a straps onto your mill or or whatever CNC device that you have, and uh, you make parts that way. I mean, it's 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 fantastic. So tell me, tell me. What do you got going on here? What's up with so this? This is this is 3D hybrid. We're doing a demonstration of wire art additive manufacturing. We provide metal 3D printing tools that'll fit with virtually any CNC machine. You point at a machine, we'll make it hybrid. We'll get it printing metal. So what we're doing this week is uh, we're basically printing an, an army of octopuses. Um, we've got a steel demonstration. We're printing this octopus in about five hours, and then machining the left half of it in about three hours. So another big thing that's interesting in this space is, I mean, it's changing, right? The whole concept of old school manufacturing is kind of on the way out, which is, is kind of interesting. We're not just talking like 3D printing versus machining. I mean, like, the idea that manufacturers are putting up boxes. They're, uh, the old school version is to always hide what you're doing, you know? And IMTS used to be the place where people would you know, they'd reveal stuff, but they'd always keep it under wraps. And it was always, uh, you had to be careful about who was around your machine. Competitors would come in and scope out opponents' machines and things like that. You know, I mean, I even heard stories about people uh, urinating in coolant tanks and things like that. I mean, that's a thing that happens here. But a lot of it's changing, and what's really cool is uh, a lot of it's changing for the, for the future of, like, Silicon Valley-style partnerships and, and uh, you know, working together to really make to make things happen together. Um, there's no reason to shut out competitors, at least to a certain degree. Obviously the proprietary information and things like that, but shutting out your competitors completely, you, you lose out. Everybody wins if you work together and really <laughs> find the best place to get the best technology. It's, uh, it's interesting to see how this works and, and there's, a lot, there's a lot more that'll happen, I think. Um, as, as manufacturing grows as an industry, which it will, it'll keep growing, the fact that uh, partnerships are starting to really become a real thing. I think we'll start to see a lot of the small time manufacturers become big time manufacturers and
these things out there because this is how we learn more and more about the community, right? And it's not just people making little boxes with holes, they're actually taking the time out of their day, away from their families, buying material out of their own pocket to contribute to the community. Just yell with one, two, and what, what do you want to yell? Okay, we'll just go <laughs> One, two, three. Yeah.